Hi, this is Scott uh, on the On.NET Show, and today I'm here with Matt and Luke to talk about Pulumi. Hi, this is Scott Hunter uh, for On.NET, and today I've got Matt Ellis here, and we have Luke Hoban from Pulumi here as well, and we're going to talk about how you can use Pulumi to actually build .NET applications and put them in the cloud without having to use complicated JSON files called ARM templates and stuff to go figure out your infrastructure. You can actually just write your infrastructure in code, uh, which is like what I want because I know that the, you know, whether I'm in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, um, I'm going to get great IntelliSense uh, for the types of stuff that I'm going to build. Um, can you talk more about uh, what the tech looks like? Yeah, so I mean, Pulumi is, uh, we're a startup uh, here in Seattle, um, and uh, we're focused on, on building sort of a modern infrastructure as code tool. So taking some of those ideas of infrastructure as code that things like ARM and things like Terraform and things like uh, many other solutions out there are doing, but instead of using sort of JSON or YAML or these sorts of formats that aren't really amenable to IDE tooling, to developers, to software engineering practices generally, uh, we're letting folks do that inside existing programming languages. And so we actually just recently uh, added support for .NET, for C Sharp, for F Sharp, for VB. Uh, and so, yes, what we want to show off today was how you can use .NET to actually provision your infrastructure. Yeah, I was, telling you, I was talking to you earlier and saying that I uh, had talked to Brendan Burns and, and he has something called Metaparticle mm -hmm. that kind of does this, but it was like a prototype years ago. Yep. And when I saw your tech, I'm like, it's real now. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think, you know, there's, there's a whole sort of continuum here uh, because the sort of the raw provisioning, the sort of things that ARM can do, the things that sort of Kubernetes YAML files can do, where we sort of provision the raw resources, and they feel very low level, especially to sort of .NET developers or you know, folks who are typically higher up in the stack. Uh, and so often folks are, who are writing their .NET apps are, don't feel comfortable dropping down into writing these hundreds of, uh, hundreds of lines or thousands of lines of, uh, of YAML or JSON. Uh, so they often want these higher level abstractions, right? And when we think about abstractions, one of the best tools for abstractions is code, right? It's, it's, it's you know, .NET, I can create classes, I can create you know, functions, I can create uh, methods great packages uh, and, and ship them into NuGet or whatever. And so because we have all those tools in, in .NET, we can use all those tools to build our infrastructure as well. And that, that lets us get to these higher level abstractions that make it simpler to develop infrastructure that things like MetaParticle we're trying to do as well. So, Can you do a demo? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I have here, you know, the, the Plumi uh, website. And, you know, one of the things you can click Get Started, you can go through a flow. I'll just actually do this uh, directly in, in the CLI and so show kind of what the experience is once you have Plumi installed to sort of build a new application uh, using .NET um, and deploy it to Azure. And so what I'll do is I'll just start with Plumi new uh, and I'll say Azure C Sharp. Uh, this is one of the templates we have that uh, creates a, an Azure C Sharp application. Uh, and so I'm going to call this blob demo. Uh, I have a description. I'll just take the default uh, there. I'll call the stack dev. So this is like for every uh, application I build, I can sort of instantiate it multiple times. Maybe I have my production environment and my staging environment. And in this case, I'm just going to start working in a dev environment. Uh, and then because I'm building an Azure template here, uh, I can pick a location, an Azure location to deploy it to. And so I'll start with West US. And uh, now I could actually go and uh, you know, deploy this. And I'll run .NET build just to make sure that everything's uh, kind of working here. And then I'll open up this uh, in, in an IDE. So what kind of .NET app did you get from this? Yeah, so I'll open that up and uh, we'll take a look. Uh, there we go. So let's let's take a look at that in uh, Visual Studio Code. All right. So uh, so this is you know mostly kind of a normal .NET app. Um, the two things that are sort of unique to Pulumi. We have a Pulumi YAML file which just says that this is a Pulumi program that's going to use the .NET runtime. So we also support you know TypeScript. We support Python. Uh, we have preview support for Go as well. Um, but .NET is something we've just uh, sort of released in preview recently and really excited to, to make it available to .NET. And so by saying runtime.NET, it's going to try to load this all up inside, um, you know, inside the .NET process. Um, and other than that, you know, this is a very simple application. Um, so you know, we just have a main method, uh, runs deployment.runasync. And all of the sort of logic of what we're going to try and deploy into the cloud is just inside uh, the body of this function. And so for folks who have worked with you know, Azure before, this should look pretty familiar. We're creating a resource group uh, called resource group, not too original there. Uh, and then we're creating an account. In this case, this account is actually um, a storage account. And so if I come up here, you can see I'm using the Pulumi Azure storage namespace. Uh, and in fact, if I hover over this, we'll see we kind of get IntelliS, we kind of get you know, uh, these hover tips and things that tell us about what these resources are we're creating. And one of the sort of amazing things, because this is just an IDE, is I can come in here and say like Pulumi.azure. 
And I get every namespace of every resource that's available inside Azure, right? And there's, you know, as you imagine, there's a lot of different resources. This is just the namespaces, right? You know, this, this isn't even all the resources. If I go into compute namespace, now I've got, you know, all the things, you know, virtual machines and snapshots and scale sets and all these different resources available. So everything in Azure is available here uh, inside uh, the Pulumi and available to use from uh, C Sharp. Uh, and so in this case, you know, I'm creating a storage account, a uh, place where I can sort of store some uh, resources, some blobs and that sort of thing. Uh, and so what I can do is I can sort of, uh, well, let me actually just open up a terminal. And to deploy this, instead of sort of running .NET run or something like that to run my application, what I actually do is I say Pulumi up. And this will go and, and deploy my application. I'll talk a little bit about why we have to do that with a separate command here in a second. Uh, but first off, you'll see we automatically kind of build uh, the application so you can quickly just make changes to your code and then deploy it. Uh, and this will actually go and deploy those resources into the cloud in just a second. And one other thing I'll note uh, just while, I'm, while we're looking at this is then I can export some functions. So I can export a dictionary out here that has the connection string that gives me access to this. So from the outside, I can go and see what resources I created and what those are. So we'll see, when we run Plumi up, it actually gives a preview of what changes are going to be made. So before I go and actually change the cloud, I want to see what changes are going to be made into the cloud provider. I'm going to create this resource group. I'm going to create this account. And I just say yes to create those. All right, so now it's actually going to go and create these things. Let me ask some novice questions while yeah. we're going through this. What if I went back to the app later on and added more stuff? Exactly. So that was that was almost exactly what I was going to dis <laughs> uh, describe next. Because one of the interesting things about this is, you know, this looks a little bit like it's just some imperative code, right? I'm just going to create these resources. And the one big difference is that this really is still infrastructure as code. So this is desired state. Uh, so the program runs to figure out what state I want my cloud resources to be in. And then we go and compare that with what state they're actually in in the cloud. And we compute a diff, and then we just deploy those changes. And so that's why we want to show you that preview and show you the details of the update there is because we want to be sure that the diff we've computed really matches what you expect and that something hasn't changed in your cloud provider that makes this uh, not match. It kind of like feels, feels like EF migrations to me in some ways. It is. It is a lot like these of sort of things. These desired state models are, are showing up in a lot of different places. But certainly in the cloud infrastructure space, they're really important because you've got sort of potentially a production infrastructure. You want to make targeted changes to that. You don't want to have to stand it up uh, again from scratch every time you want to make any change. And so, you know, for example, one thing I can do, well, I'll just show, in fact, instead of showing sort of details of this, uh, I'll just show one change here that I could make. So if, you know, imagine I change my account tier to premium, right? Uh, now if I do pull me up, I'll actually see it'll show me a preview of what change is going to be expected, just to the point of the question you asked. And uh, we'll actually see that this kind of change requires us to replace uh, the storage account. Gotta take a second. Yeah, so if you see that, the preview actually tells me it's going to need to replace that storage account because the account tier changed. Uh, and it's going to potentially create a different connection string. And so it's telling me that change is going to be made. So I didn't have to recreate everything. I just targeted make a change to this infrastructure. So that gives me a lot of flexibility to sort of, and these will cascade changes. If this has to get replaced, then anything dependent on it will replace, all that sort of thing. So a lot of flexibility there. But this is a very simple example. Let me just quickly show a couple of sort of more complicated examples uh, of the sorts of things you can do here. Uh, so in our examples repo uh, and sort of GitHub Plumi examples, we have examples of you know a bunch of different kind of things you can do with uh, with C Sharp and uh, and Azure. So you know Azure Kubernetes service. So we can go and create um, you know we can go and create a Kubernetes cluster, for example, using Pulumi, and we can pass all these parameters in, not using YAML or something, but using you know a real uh, programming language here where we get you know IDE support and type checking. And if I you know mess up one of these properties, I get that you know squiggle underneath there, the kind of thing you expect. So as I'm typing, I'm getting feedback I immediately. Um, but I can also work with App Service. I can work with you know Key Vault. I can work with uh, Cosmos DB. All of these different uh, kinds of resources. All these different kinds of applications you can build on Azure. You can now build using .NET. And then store them in your source control and everything else. So it's you know that's exactly yeah. So you can store them in source control. We we have integrations with Azure DevOps. Uh, so you can plug these into an Azure DevOps pipeline and just deploy them through a CI/CD process. Um, you know all these sorts of tools that you expect to be able to plug into in the ecosystem are kind of available there. That's amazing. Um, I, I can't wait to go try it myself now that I've seen it. It's uh, yeah. As I said, uh, I've always struggled with Azure. Um, I'm kind of a, a portal person because I can click around and make what I want. Um, I would never handwrite a file to go do that. I would just basically go export what I've actually done. Right. Um, and so with this, I get to live where I'm comfortable in my code. Yep. Um, it's easy to share with the rest of my developers. Um, so this is awesome. Yep. So, what state is this? Is this is this uh, production or is this a preview? 
Yeah, so Pulumi itself, the, the core offering, um, which just recently hit uh, 1.0, so it's very much in production. We have a lot of uh, folks using Pulumi to deploy their production infrastructure already. Um, a lot of folks doing that on Azure as well. Um, the .NET support is actually something we just launched in preview, I think, yesterday. Uh, so, um, you know, really recently we kind of made this available in preview. We're actively working on it, but, um, but it's very complete, so it's something that folks can go out and start using today. Um, but we expect that to be sort of GA in the next, you know, couple of months. Do I have to pay for this? No, so everything kind of I'm showing here is actually part of the open source uh, uh, project. And so uh, Pulumi is open source, it's Apache 2 licensed. Um, you know, all these tools, all the libraries are available uh, for free. Uh, and so we really want to make sure that anyone can use Pulumi. Now for, for teams and enterprises using it, we do have sort of some offerings for them to sort of manage uh, access to stacks and things at the team and enterprise level. Um, but everything I've shown here is definitely free uh, and open source. Well, that is amazing. Um, I would just tell the .NET folks, if you want to go build some cloud stuff, uh, you should definitely try this Pulumi tech because it looks really awesome to me. Um, and thanks for coming on the show today. I, yep. I'm excited about the tech. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs>